Hi, everybody. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at elasticity and a little bit about demand. Um, and, and I'll explain what those two things are in just a second. But demand, if we remember from last unit, was the idea of consumers' willingness and ability to pay. And I said that, you know, you have an inverse relationship between quantity demanded and price. And so there's this, there's this typically downward sloping demand curve. But what I didn't say was why. And there are two simple reasons. One is called the substitution effect and the other is called the income effect. And the substitution effect, they're both, again, they're both reasons why demand is downward sloping. Substitution effect says that if the price of good A goes up, then we would expect the demand to increase for good B and the quantity demanded of A to go down. I'll move that over just a little bit. And that's the idea here, right? And the first part is just the idea of related goods, right? That one price can affect the demand for another. But in reality, what is also happening in the original good is that people are like, I don't need as much of good A anymore because now I'm buying more of good B. And so this is why when the price rises of a good, typically we see the quantity demanded fall. The second reason is that if the price of good A goes up, and this is especially if A is expensive. Um, so this is the idea of saying like, you know, it's a large portion of your income, maybe it's rent or utilities and that kind of thing. We'd say therefore households, and I'm abbreviating HH, households uh, purchasing power, which I'll define in a second, purchasing power decreases. Now purchasing power is your ability to buy other stuff. And so if good A is a relatively large share of your income and it goes up in price, then it's going to diminish your ability to purchase all kinds of other things. And what we observe then is that therefore households respond by decreasing their quantity demanded of good A in so much as they can, right? You know, if it's utilities, Maybe they're more careful about turning off the electricity and that sort of thing. But in general, what we find is that, that they will decrease their quantity demanded of A because it, it squishes their ability to buy other stuff. Now, normally, nine times out of 10, these two things are both reasons why demand is downward sloping. But your book has some very interesting examples where what happens if they move up opposite each other, right? If, especially if the good is inferior, where your income rises, but you know, you're, you're, buying, you're buying less of the product and that kind of thing. So check out your book for some interesting examples where maybe they don't always move in the same direction and, and push the same way. Now let's talk about elasticity. Elasticity is the responsiveness, or we can say the relationship, of one variable to another in economics, right? So it's really just describing the relationship between two variables. And we would say that, that if they're really strongly related, then it's really elastic, right? We have a big kind of like band, like a, a spring. Um, and, and if they don't really relate to each other, then it's a really tight and it doesn't really cause that much of a, of a response is another way to think about it. Now the two variables will always know based on the name of the elasticity. So the first type of elasticity is called price elasticity of demand. So this one, PED, is the percent change, so it's the change, right, in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in the price. And this is really just telling us if the price changes, how much is the quantity demanded going to change? And that's really important information for if you're buying a product, right, if you're selling products, if you're a policymaker and you're interested in how do we deal with this market of products, um, it's a really important one. So let's take a look at what that looks like in, in practice. We're going to look at the middle one first. If there is a positive 5% increase in the price, right, an increase in price, and a 5% decrease in the quantity, then the price elasticity of demand is one. Now, I know that that's negative one, but usually we just take these as the absolute value because these are always going to be a negative value. So sometimes you'll just see them given as the absolute value. Now, in a graphical form, this is going to look a lot like the demand curves that we just already been drawing, right? So that you basically have a proportional, if you're going from this point to this point, your price goes down and your quantity goes up and they're about the same amount. Now, if we were to say there's goods where maybe you increase the price, but it doesn't really change the quantity all that much, right? So you ramp the price up from here to here, but what happened to the quantity? Well, it's hard to even see. 
it went down just a little bit. And that's the idea that there's very little responsiveness to the price change, and that gives us a less than one, right? So if it's the absolute value, it might be 0.5. Now, there are lots of products where they're very inelastic, where a price change doesn't change the demand very much at all. And in fact, there's even ones where it's zero, right? As long as the people are willing and able to buy it, then they, they're immune to changing the quantity by the price. Now, you might be saying like, yeah, give me a break. What is that? Insulin, right? People basically, if you're willing and able to buy it, if you have enough money to buy it and you're willing to, you have a, a fixed quantity. There's really, it, it doesn't change. You're not gonna be like, oh, insulin's on sale. A second one would be cigarettes, um, heroin, um, anything, anything like that where you absolutely need it, right? Or at least your body perceives a need for it. Typically, demand is pretty inelastic for those. Toilet paper is pretty inelastic as well, right? And just kind of think about that one. All right, elastic. At least we hope that it is. Uh, if it's relatively elastic, then the curve starts to kind of flatten out a little bit. Now, a little trick here for you, inelastic ones always look like a capital I, so that kind of helps there. Elastic ones means the quantity changes a lot if the price just changes a little bit, and that's greater than one. So if it's price, price elasticity of demand is say 1.5 or two or three, then that means the quantity changed relatively larger than the price change. And we also have perfectly elastic. Now these, they don't really show up in the real world very much, but it generally says that there's really, really huge changes in quantity based on small changes in price and the undefined value here. Realistically, it's more like saying, you know, that there's a there's there's certain products where they have a huge swing in the quantity demanded, even with small changes in price. Now, let's look at really reasons why. Sorry, I'm kind of go ahead here. Reasons why elasticity of demand can vary for different goods. So first would be substitute availability. This is the idea that if there aren't very many substitutes for your product, for the product, and you want to buy it, then you have to pay, you know, whatever the price is. So insulin is a great example. Gasoline is another example cigarettes and heroin, right? Toilet paper, where it's like, there's not that many substitutes for it. And so, you know, you, you get, you're gonna have to just buy it. Now, share of income, and by the way, these also were the reverse way, right? If there's lots of substitutes, like Coca-Cola and Pepsi products, then, then generally they're more elastic demand. Share of income. If it's a small share of your income, then we notice that actually people don't change their quantities very much because they don't even notice. Think about somebody buying a beef jerky stick in a gas station, it's like a dollar. If it goes up 50% in price to $1.50, the people who are buying you know, Slim Jims are still gonna buy Slim Jims. They don't notice the small changes. But if it's a really large part of your income, thousands of dollars, right, a big luxury vacation package, then even small changes in price, people will notice and they'll be more responsive. Necessity versus luxury is another one, where if it's needed, then you know, you're gonna have really pretty low elasticity or very inelastic. But if it's a luxury product, people will go, I don't really need it this time, I'll wait till the price changes. If it's addictive or habit forming, typically we would say those have really low elasticity values as well. I mentioned heroin earlier. Here's a good example of why that matters. You might be like, why do you keep talking about heroin? So we think about like a policymaker. You, know, you want to grow up and, and change the world? Okay, here you go. You have a demand curve that looks like that for heroin. It's very inelastic. And then you have a supply curve that looks like this because suppliers of heroin can grow all kinds of other products and sell all kinds of other stuff. And you say, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna try to reduce the number of people who are addicted to heroin in our community. And so what's our strategy? Well, all right, let's, let's go after the dealers, right? Which is a really politically and morally, sometimes it's something that people are like, oh, I support that. Let's go after the dealers. Let's go after the suppliers. So you cut the supply, right? We have a pretty substantial decrease in the supply. Well, what happened? The price went up. Okay, but what happened to the quantity? Decreased only a tiny amount. You didn't work, all right? So it's not gonna work to just focus on that. But, but in fact, a better solution, if you really, if the policy goal is reduce the number of people using heroin, there's a fairly straightforward solution. Right? You have a demand curve that looks like that, supply curve that looks like that. And so you just say, let's try to get the demand curve to decrease. Let's do rehabilitation programs. Let's do you know, education programs. If we do that, the price falls and the quantity falls quite a bit. And that's what we really want, right? So thinking about how these concepts can be applied in all kinds of circumstances is really useful. Last one is time window of purchase. That's the idea that in a, in a short run, right? If you're in a car, or you're driving to work and you're like, ah, I need gas, then you, you have to pay what the price is. They're, you're almost inelastic. But if you're given enough time, gas prices could go up three, four, five dollars a gallon. 
you have enough time to adjust. You could buy a more fuel efficient car, you could get a carpool, you could ride a bike, you could walk and so forth. So given more time, consumers generally have more elastic demand for products, even the same product. So that's the idea there. All right, hopefully this helped you. I'll see you next time.